Hi, welcome to Slowpoke 2020. We're out here at Flag is Up Farms. If you don't know that, that's the ranch of Monty and Pat Roberts. Monty is known as the Horse Whisperer in the movie of that name because he's famous for training and breaking wild horses without ever hurting them. We have about 23 artists here this year. They are painters, they are sculptors, they are photographers. And we do this show annually here. We're very lucky. We are actually trying to replace the former Pepper Tree Art Show, which faded out about 12 or 15 years ago. And the Valley kind of felt they wanted a high-end art show here, and we were lucky enough to be selected. So if any of the artists at the show are of interest to you or you want to see who they are, you can go to the Slowpoke website. It is www.the-slowpoke.com. Slowpoke is S-L-O-P-O-K-E, slowpoke.com, the-slowpoke.com. And next year, same weekend, we're always the last weekend in September because the weather is to die for, like here, and there's no other competing big art shows in the United States on this weekend. So if you can't make it this year, please put it on your calendar for next year. You know how this one came to be, don't tell you? Tell me, tell me. Well, Pat was, she had a wonderful man that was helping her. He's from Carmel Valley and uh, up there, and he's a good sculptor. Had a lot of things. Um, he's a CA artist and painter too. And uh, he said, Pat, you should do a horse upside down. Uh -huh. and she said, What do you mean upside down? You should do a horse upside down to prove to yourself that you can do a horse upside down. And when you see the bottom of all of its feet, when you see the inside of the hind leg, you're seeing things that most artists don't see. The bottom of the throat, the chest area. Do a horse upside down. Then you've done the whole horse when you're finished um, because you've done a lot of them right side up. So I came home from a trip I was making and here's this horse sitting there upside down. <laughs> I said, what in the heck are you doing? This was in clay. And she told me the story. And I said, Pat, you should turn the horse over and do it and then turn the sculpture over. No, you have to build him from zero, upside down, if you're going to play this game and do this thing right. So I said, well, congratulations. It seems like too much effort to me. But it was a real challenge for her to get things right that she hadn't seen before, you know. Yeah. Not really seen in, in terms of how you see a horse under normal conditions. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how that got going. This one got going because of a lady that came from England to take care of some children for, and, and, and an older man. She was a nurse. And uh, the man's wife died, and she stayed there working for him outside of, um, in the, the city up there in, uh, in Montana. And she always wanted to ride a side saddle, but she used the ranch bit on the horse and the ranch horse and rode in the side saddle. And Queen Elizabeth II saw it, and she knew the story. And so she got that, and it sits at Windsor Castle. Amazing. Any other good stories over here? Well, this one uh, is from a foster son of ours inspired this. And he breeds these horses called Noguare horses in India. Ooh. And uh, we raised him here on this place from about 14, 15 years of age on up. And he's now the leading trainer of all time in Dubai. Wow. And uh, these horses have a habit of having their ears touched together at the top. <laughs> Noguare horses. Wow. And uh, on a recent trip to India, I saw hundreds of these horses and they are quite beautiful. And their blood went up through Mongolia, um, across the top of China and became part of those that uh, are the breed of horses that went to Iceland and Ireland and stuff. So some of their blood is in those horses. Mm. This one was a donkey. <laughs> That's Martha there. And Martha was a donkey that some Mexican fellows brought up from Mexico to rope 
huh. in contests to see how fast you could rope the donkey. Wow. Yeah, and um, Debbie Gerber of Gerber Baby Foods. Yeah. Uh, Debbie Gerber saw this Martha, I think in Texas, and adopted her. Oh. And brought her out here, and she lived the rest of her years in abject comfort. Isn't that nice? And she recently died after Pat started this sculpture. Oh, wow. She died. And uh, that's a painting of her there. And then Pat did the sculpture now. And uh, she lived here in the valley, and a lot of people got to know her. Oh. She became quite famous. Yeah. And, and this is a, um, a horse that Pat did turning in a certain way. And I was the first person in competition to turn a horse around in this particular way that they now turn them and, and the whole world makes their turns this way. It's a pivot on the hind leg. And uh, so Pat wanted to do that in bronze so that it lasted forever. Yeah. This was just a, um, a sculpture that she did while taking a class at um, Santa Barbara City College. And uh, it was required that they do a nude, and so she did that. That's the one that started all at Santa Barbara City College, huh? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. That's exceptional. Yeah. And this one's just waking up. Pat calls it good morning. And the baby waking up. The bookends happen to be horses. This is Johnny Tivio, the most famous horse that I ever rode. And he won four world championships for me. And this is Julius Dahl, Pat's favorite horse of all time. And they became bookends. And she just completed this one for some folks that moved here to the valley. He's a, a dermatologist. And uh, they wanted a horse's head for their fireplace. Ooh. This is Pat Roberts. Uh, she is both an equestrian of some skill level and uh, she's also an artist she paints but she mostly sculpts she mostly sculpts horses but today at the slowpoke 2020 she's unveiling her most recent sculpture which is a donkey and we're going to let her tell you about who this donkey is and why she sculpted it this is martha and martha was a very very special donkey she was a rescue donkey that a friend of mine um, rescued about 15 or so years ago in Texas and brought her to California and she's been a companion to all of my friends' horses since that time. The painting behind is not mine, but that is her painting. And she did that painting a couple years ago of Martha. And I just finished Martha. I actually got her from the foundry last week. And Martha was very, very special and very beloved very beloved and uh, it was a it was a labor of love to do martha because she was unique and uh, people uh, appreciate something as a story and martha's story is a good one so uh, i hope that it'll be well received i hope that lots of people will, uh, like i am love the story of so is this number one of a limited edition, or is this an artist proof? This is uh, actually, I started out with number three, okay. because the number one will go to the owner. Naturally. All right. Yes, and I'll do an AP for myself later. Right, okay. So this is number three, and number you plan three, to have maybe... 35. 35 limited editions, and you know, often the price of sculpture goes up with time because it becomes more popular and foundries become more expensive. So what is your initial asking price at this point? At this point, it's $3,000. So folks, $3,000 buys you this beautiful, charming little donkey at the Slowpoke 2020 this year. So, you know, get on your horse, get back in the saddle again, and trot on in here and meet Pat and take a look at Martha. That's Martha on the podium, not in the red shirt. So that's Pat. <laughs> that's and, uh, you know, come see this. So this is three sculptors and... Uh, Three unveilings at the same show. It's really pretty exciting. So great. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. So, Errol Gordon this morning, uh, who's one of our favorite artists and sculptors at the Slowpoke. This is his, gosh, I want to say fourth year, maybe his fifth year. Uh, fifth. Fifth year here at the show. 
And he just does wonderful sculptures and paintings and very interesting guy because his daytime job is a very logical lawyer and his his intellectual satisfaction comes from, you know, the the art world. So we have his brand new sculpture here today. It's called Conchita and it's being revealed for the very first time. So tell us about it. Okay, so uh, this is my most recent sculpture that I've done. Uh, and it is called Conchita or Conchita uh, Catrone, who is a famous Peruvian bullfighter. She's a woman. And I thought that it was very, very intriguing to have a woman international bullfighter uh, that I never knew about. And, and most people don't know about her. And she, she was um, uh, fighting bulls at the age of 15. She um, uh, just recently passed away in 2009. Um, after fighting bulls, she married and raised six children. But uh, the great story that's uh, told about Conchita, and it's historically correct, is she is the first woman to fight a bull who wasn't on horseback. The, the bull riding authorities only allowed women to fight bulls on horseback. But she, in the, in the midst of an international competition, got off the horse, got on the ground, fought a bull, and the crowd went crazy and uh, excited. But in any event, this, this is a depiction of her uh, technique. Um, we've done some research to find as many um, photographs and, and representations of her. So, Errol, the, the, the original sculpture itself was done in clay, is that right? Yes, it goes from clay and then it's a uh, mold is making, made uh, to form a wax model and then the wax is uh, the lost wax melted away melted away in the, in the melting process or in the casting process. so this is a, a fairly complex sculpture in that you are modeling an animal the bull you are modeling a figurative the woman and you're modeling the motion of her pulling the yes so the uh, most of my sculptures I like to have motion in it because just a lump of metal isn't very interesting so if, if you can get motion and movement in a sculpture then it adds some interest, and, and it, it is, becomes art. This is Dino Mahaffey. Dino Mahaffey is at the Slowpoke 2020 at Five Is Up Farms. He is both an artist, with the paintings behind him and his, and he's a sculptor. And we have today the unveiling of his latest sculpture for the first time to the public. Well, Dino, tell us a little bit about this particular sculpture. Time to take that off, and it is unveiled. Cool. Okay, I, I originally did a painting of this. I like this, the, the stance and everything. Check it as spurs. And then I, uh, but the arm was up here. So it was a sculpting, it looked like it was just waving. So I, I designed it with a mailbox. I rest his arm down more. And uh, then I just had to make up that part because the front of it was just a uh, painting. And I don't have the painting here to show, but uh, the painting is exactly the same size. So it's fun to do, and I had the challenge of figuring out the, what you wouldn't see in the flat surface, the three-dimensional three area. So how did you make the sculpture? Is that out of clay or something? Yeah, it's clay, and uh, made molds and uh, turned it into bronze. And this is the artist proof? Yeah, this is the artist proof. This is the first one done. And you'll have a, a limited edition of? A limited edition of nine. Yeah. Nine. And what's your price going to be for this sculpture? The price? Yeah. I'm not sure yet. Uh, okay. Here it says 6700 Okay, so there's your, your first edition right. artist proof price, and it may go up uh, yeah, with popularity. Up, yeah. So. Come to the Slowpoke and introduce yourself to Dino and learn more about Spurcheck, his uh, beautiful piece of sculpture here. Thank you. Thank you for having me here.
I'm Kathy Murillo, the mayor of Santa Barbara, and you're watching Santa Barbara Arts TV. Hi, I'm Oscar Gutierrez. I'm Santa Barbara City Council member, and you're watching Santa Barbara Arts TV. Finally, our playgrounds are open again. So these are the playgrounds that are in our city parks, and necessarily they were closed because we were worried about virus transmission. And now that the city is moving into those other tiers of reopening, um, this was just this weekend. And so people uh, can now be on the playgrounds. Kids, we're asking them to wear a mask to keep their social distance, um, to only be in there for 30 minutes if other people are waiting. Otherwise, you know, stay there as long as you want. Um, and then to cleanse your hands before you go in and then when you leave, cl clean them again. Um, with wipes or, or, I mean, I think most people have hand sanitizer and wipes in their car. And so that was, that's just a way of making sure, you know, people have clean hands going in and coming out. Um, but the playgrounds, people really miss that, you know, and especially the children needed to get their energy out and go have some fun. So that's really good news. The other um, COVID changes, uh, now, um, restaurants can have indoor seating, 25% of their um, indoor area. And people are loving being outside though and eating outside, especially if we have good weather. On that note, um, the city has released winter, fall winter guidelines for dining outside. Um, just real quick, like for instance, that any of your canopies, they, they have to be open on three sides. Right, because you know maybe you want to keep um, the fog out or the rain, um, and so it has to still feel like outdoors. Like right now, we have the window open. That's what beats back the COVID, right? You have some fresh air and some sunshine. Um, so that's one of the things that we're asking people to do, and then also to tie down or secure any of the infrastructure out there in the parklet in case there's a big wind. So we are preparing for winter. It rain, when it rains, it rains like crazy in Santa Barbara. So we kind of have to be ready for that. Hi guys, Adam, founder of Adam's Angels. We're here at Alameda Park. It's Thursday. We're here every uh, Thursday from four till six. Uh, we are looking for clothes, for hygiene materials, bicycles now. We're giving away bicycles to those uh, that don't have transportation and they need to get to work. Uh, we came in existence in March during uh, COVID when uh, the resources for the homeless were shut down and we thought oh, we, we've got to help them. So we started pooling our monies together and our resources came out and started feeding and clothing the homeless. And from that, we've had donors donate just about everything we need. Uh, Crystal here donated this uh, wonderful uh, trailer. Well, Katie Perry's parents donated, Emily Littlefield, we all, it goes on and on. David Dart uh, built this website for us. Uh, we also have a uh, uh, Martin Design, who did all the graphics for us and the t-shirts. You know, goodness is, is uh, out there. The cream has risen to the top, and I'm so blessed to witness all the wonderful people that have uh, come out to help. Now, if anybody's interested to help, they could come to the park between 4 and 6 on Thursdays, or they could go to the website, adamsangels.life, to donate clothes, donate money, donate food. There's many, many different ways that uh, you can donate and help. And everything that you give goes directly to people in need. Thanks so much for your service in the community. Uh, bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, 
Okay, buddy, here. You're a nice ostrich. Good for you, boy. Good boy. You're going to be on TV and famous. Good boy. Oh, they're humongous, these ostriches. I love it. This is the ultimate Instagram. <laughs> oh my god, there's too many ostriches here. It's wild. It's ostrich land. We've arrived. It's a new world. It's the ostrich world. Ostrich land world. Look at these. Hello, ostrich. Oh, he loves that. Hello, ostrich. Arr, arr, arr. 